What is going on guys, Gaston right here, and today I'm with my friend Rainier. He happens to be Sony rep. So as you can see, we have a lot of cameras right here in front of us, and a lot of you guys asked a lot of questions regarding the last video. And also a lot of questions have been asked regarding the system itself. So into this video, I wanna welcome Rainier to the world, Rainier, Sony, and the world there, the internet. But anyway, so what I wanted to ask you is, a question that pops all the time, and I kind of like came up with my own conclusions, and it is regarding the A7C and the A7 III, right? People want to know which camera should I buy? Which one is the best bang for my buck? Um, you know, I want to get a camera that is going to be kind of like future proof and so on. So, what can you say about both cameras right now? If you have big hands or if you don't care about the size, I mean, the A7 III is absolutely fine, perfect camera, and probably you wouldn't like something that is small. You want Correct. something a little bit beefy and things like that. Um, if you uh, if you do care about the size, this is a, I don't wanna say a perfect camera, but a very good camera for it. Um, between the two, the quality is the same sensor, by the way. So same it's the sensor. same sensor, so it's the same quality video, the same quality pictures. When it comes to video, the Sony a7C obviously has more advanced features, the real-time tracking, which is something that I out of focus tracking live, you know, in video, which the Sony a7 III uh, doesn't, doesn't, have. doesn't have. So the a7 III has a real-time tracking autofocus. So the a7 III doesn't have that, but it has something similar. So the a7C is gonna be the tracking, something very similar like the a7R4. Correct. Where you can touch the screen, it can follow the subject, or uh, like you said, you know, in video and photography, you can follow the eyes uh, without a problem. Uh, if the person turns around, it will follow the, the head. Uh, when you see a face, it will follow the face. If, when, if it sees eyes, definitely it will follow the eyes. Question. So this is basically the, uh, the second full frame camera with tilt screen, right? Correct. And probably you're not gonna be able to answer this question, but <laughs> why doesn't it have touch screen capabilities? So it does, but just to focus. Just to focus, it, it like the other ones. Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't have the, the touching capability of the A7S III. S3, yeah. uh, well, there's three things. It, the, the actual screen is different. So the right. actual hardware of the screen is different. Oh, okay. Uh, the operating system of the camera is totally different. And third, the processor is totally different. So Correct. the processor of the A7S III is eight times faster than the previous uh, generation processor. So that's that's a that's a big one right there. Hence why this camera cost uh, more than twice the price of that camera, right? Th that, Latest that's, technology. That's, that's part of it, that's, that's part cost. of it. You know, th this is a different beast uh, in video anyway. And probably video. you just answer the question why this camera doesn't 10-bit because, you know, is the processor can't handle 10-bit. The A7S III is complete redesigned camera from the ground up. So that camera is everything brand new, including the body, the place of the buttons. The EVF, the which EV is ridiculous. The EVF, the autofocusing system. So this is still faster autofocus wise than the A7C. Um, so that camera is just, a, it's a different beast. That's why. Now, the other question that a lot of people want to know is that why so many cameras? And, you know, I understand why, but, you know, if you can give us an explanation of what goes on in Sony's mind when creating different <laughs> cameras that do similar things, but at the same time are different, you know? Yeah. And let's actually put it in order. Uh, I think this one will come first, then the R4, and then the A7S right here. Let's close the screen. There you go. Yes. So, um, three, R4, and A7 is three. Okay, okay. The, yeah, that's the R3, but uh, that's R3, but. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is no, the R3, okay, the sorry. R3, the R4 is not the house. It's okay, no worries. So. <laughs> he knows his so, stuff, uh, <laughs> he knows his stuff. Yeah, I was, I was, I was trying to trick you. <laughs> I was trying to trick you. <laughs> anyway, so so this is the thing. Uh, Sony is kind of the, the, the only manufacturer that in this line of cameras, like the full frame camera or APS-C and things like that, have this different kind of cameras uh, tailored to a different type of either videographers or photographers. So why we have that many? Well, uh, as you probably know, the S stands for sensitivity. So that camera sensitivity, um, for those that knows video and like video, that's the camera for video. Why? 
because that camera can go a lot uh, very high in ISO. It's very good without sensors. Without introducing noise. Correct. So for video, you cannot change at will the shutter speed or the app or the aperture. You know, if you put very shallow depth of field to gain light, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I'm sorry, very wide aperture, the shallow is very shallow yeah, yeah. depth of field. If you, you cannot just put 500 of a second when you're shooting at 24B. Of course. You kind of locked. So the only of the triangle of exposure, the only, uh, the only one left is the ISO. So this is the one for it. That's what people um, get it for, for video most of the time. Anyway, uh, the R stands for resolution. So R, you know, we have the R2, R3, R4, 61 megapixels. It's mainly for photographers. It can also shoot video and the S also can shoot pictures, but uh, it's gonna be the best in our lineup for photography. 61 megapixels, still shoot 4K and things like that, but mainly for photography. Uh, you can also take a picture, uh, 16 pictures at a time, the camera compiles those Compass pictures for you. One one, yeah. It gives you a 240 megapixels. Never used that feature, by the way. I, I know that it's there, but I've never mm -hmm. used it, but it'll be nice one day just to do a test. Yeah, so, and then A7 III. A7 III is kind of the overall camera Trusty. for- Yes, yes, yes. It's very good in low light. It's very good in autofocusing system. It's very good in quality. So it's very good, like you say, for the packet, you know, for the price, dual memory card, very fast autofocusing system, even though the camera is, you know, about two years or something like that, probably a little more, something like Can that. I have, so, right? Yes. So anyway, and then the new camera is the A7C, C for compact. So still a full frame camera. Uh, Same beautiful sensor as the 24 megapixel from the there A7 III. Go. So, so a little bit to give you a little bit more differences. So why would somebody pick an A7C instead of A7 III? Well, again, it's smaller. So if you don't want to carry something that big now, people say, oh, but it's not that small. I mean, well, it, it, it's, it's a big difference. Well, I mean. <laughs> yes, because look, it's flush here. So when you put it into your, into your it, it's, it's flush. So it's like, how can I say? It feels smaller. I know that I'm jeopardizing the sensor to get dust, but we can clean it. But I mean, it is substantially a difference, you know? Yeah. Uh, that autofocusing system for video is a big deal because you just- Huge. It, you just touch anything you want on the screen and it will track that, it will stuck, stick in that. And even if you move the camera or you move the subject, it will, you know, stay whatever you touch. If you don't like to touch the screen, you can still do it with the, with the, uh, half the, the press shutter. shutter. Yes, with the, uh, the first time you 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 press halfway, Engage it will lock box. whatever you want first, and it will stay right in there. Also has something that the A7 III doesn't have, which the is flippable the flippable screen. screen. Um, yes, the viewfinder is a smaller, but you know it's because it goes the with whole... it goes with the compact, you know, uh, intention of the camera. The A7C is kind of like the perfect camera for the the money. Uh, for the amount of features that it packs, and also because it's a camera that is gonna be great for gimbals, you know? One of the things that I, a lot of the times, you know, I have problems with with some of the gimbals that I own, you know, the medium-sized gimbal, is that a lot of the times this is a conflict, the fact that you have something in the center, like the EVF, you know, touching with the back of the motor. None of the problem exists with this camera, and number one, it's gonna be lighter, therefore gimbals are gonna be able to handle it, you know, much easier than you know, something like this. And I mean, correct. I have the gimbal, the, the SC, and the, with the A7 III or the A7S III, I have to put an extremely small lens, like a 24, yeah. like a 24 That one is a 20, but mm -hmm. um, so that lens is the kind of the maximum I can put for that gimbal. With this one, I have a little bit a lighter little bit body, but now I can put a, a little bit bigger lens. Yep. So that's a that's a great point, yes. Now, one, one other thing that I wanna talk to you about and ask you is because, to be honest with you, I order two. I order one camera body only and one with a lens. And you know, I'm giving one away here in the channel, so um, I don't know if I'm gonna give it away with a lens or not yet. But I'm gonna give, give at least a body for free. But one of the things that I was super impressed is how sharp this little lens is. Oh yeah. And yeah, how light. Absolutely. To be honest with you, you know, you let me borrow the camera for a couple of, uh, maybe an hour, a couple of minutes. But um, I took a couple of pictures. I opened it in the computer, I zoomed in and I was like, wow, I haven't seen yes. that kind of resolution from a kit lens in a while. And I own a lot of cameras with kit lenses, especially the APS-C. But this is, 
in my opinion, one of the best kit lenses that Sony designed, even though the focal length is not my cup of tea, you know, 20 to 60. I mentioned that would have been nice if it was 20 to 50, that would have been ideal. And also because it's very aperture. But once again, we have a super compact lens. Look at this, super compact. Look at, you know, <laughs> in contrast with my hand, super compact lens that gives you, you know, wide, uh, not super wide, but it gives you from 28 to 60, has very low aperture, but it's super light and super capable. And in one of the pictures that I took, I mean, you still can get pretty good shallow depth of feel, you know, once you're at 60, you know, F4, mm -hmm. still pretty acceptable, man. Yes, uh, remember, uh, Sony has been working with lenses for, for a long time now. One of the things that Sony is untouched for is one mount to roll all their system. You know, Correct. so you got the uh, the same mount on the APS-C cameras, you have the same mount on the full frame cameras, and you know, also in some of the cinema, the, ca cinema the, cameras the as cinema well. Cameras. You know, being able, and this is something for, for you guys, you know, that always ask, you know, in the comments in the channel, which one should I get? Well, here's the thing, you know, if you don't know which camera you are gonna get right now, it just doesn't matter in the Sony ecosystem because you can always buy lenses and then update bodies, and you know that those lenses are gonna fit either, you know, you wanna get an APS-C camera, either you wanna get a full frame, or if you wanna get like the uh, FX6, which is the camera that I'm planning to buy and uh, at some point. And you know, you can use your lenses with some other camera manufacturers without mentioning any of them, you have to buy their lens for the APS-C and then you're stuck with a bunch of APS-C lenses, but then you grow out of it, you know, because you see what you can do with full frame, the shallower depth of feel, you know, and the nicer uh, lens option, and then you have to buy lenses. And then cinema, you know, that may be also another, another, another mount with some camera manufacturers. So, Sony is one mount to rule them all. And, um, you know, Canon is kind of going for that with the RF mount, by the way, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> Can you tell us anything about the FX6? Do you know anything? Have you heard I, anything? I, I do not, I, I just no, don't know anything. I, I don't know anything official, to be honest. I was with actually you. looking at the, the body, and one of the things that we can see is that at a glance, I can see that it's, it's gonna have two inputs, because it only has two mm -hmm. dials, whereas the FX9, you, you can have up to four channels, I believe, but mm -hmm. um, what I can see in that picture, it's gonna be a very, very good camera, very popular. E even with this one, you can you can record four channels if you have the right mic. Really? So, yeah. Left, Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, because I didn't know that. Left and right, and then two mics, uh, two XLR inputs with the- USB? With the, no, 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 with the, no, with the USB. With the, I think with that mic you have on top here. So, XLR K3M, yes. XLR K3M, that is the Correct. name of this uh, adapter. And I had it for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen a lot of people use it, but I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I noticed is obviously, you know, we have a different microphone here and not the one that comes with it. So we have a Sennheiser here. The Sony microphone is great when you use it like there, but I, I just, that's an airplane passing by, by the way. But um, I just feel it's a little bit bright, but I love, you know, just being able to uh, feed my microphone with phantom power without having to charge the microphone or anything like that. So um, I strongly recommend that. And I can't imagine with the Sony a7S III that that's just going yes, to Yes, so you can record up to four channels with the, with the a7S III, correct? That's, that's, that's very, very so nice. Two chan okay, so two channels via XLR. And then left and, and right. And then left and right from the... Oh, from that mic. From the, no, no, from, not from the camera, from the same mic. Oh, that from mic the same comes mic. with the boom, yes. It oh, comes with wow. the boom mic. So left and right on the boom mic, and then two XLRs, that would be four channels. Oh, wow. I don't think that, that anyone actually have talked about that in YouTube, or at least I haven't heard it. So <laughs> that was really good. What else can you tell us about the Sony a7S III right now that we that is not so mainstream or people know? What other trick? Uh, the, the, the viewfinder is so large inside that a lot of people has even having trouble looking at the whole thing because it's very big. So you have to go <laughs> like this or go to see the whole thing inside. Kind of like you so, get inside the camera. Yes, yeah, so you have to kind of be good because it's very big. So you'll be able to uh, customize any button and touch it and go back a little bit. So you would- re, Oh, re, you can you crop can, into you can the- You can crop into the- So instead of being a big viewfinder uh, or LED, you just go a little really? smaller, so yes. Oh, I didn't know that. And there's an option here in the menu, right? Yes, there's an option in the menu. You can customize pretty much any button so and, and, you can, and you can do it. Another another uh, option is that you have the two memory cards. So while you're recording, you can record, uh, you can fill up one memory card yeah. and it goes to the other one. It's called, you know, overflow or something yeah. like that. Uh, guess what? Without stopping the camera, 
without stop recording, you can take out the one is full and put another empty and you can keep recording. That is Shut actually up. pretty good, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't is. think that I've heard about that trick <laughs> either. So you can actually empty a car while the camera is recording. It's recording in the other one. It, and you and can remove put, the other one. Uh, empty it out or you have another card, just put back in mm -hmm. and close it and keep going. And then it's gonna, you can keep doing that. Just gotta make sure that your camera is fixed, uh, very solid, so you don't cause any motion yes. when you extract it. But that's actually really good. Yeah. I, wow. And, and another, another uh, it's not a trick, but pretty much all the Sony cameras have it. Uh, this one is just a faster charging. So yeah. uh, if you have, uh, if you plug the USB-C uh -huh. cord here, you can just plug it into the, into the wall or into a battery pack and record and, and record, it, record, no, record and you can keep giving a juice you know battery to the camera but you have to have like a battery a but you have to have a battery you right? have to have a battery so yeah. even with this battery mm -hmm. you know i just plug it in with a cable that you have it in the backpack or whatever yeah. you are doing and feed it it's just it's just gonna be a, a long time or you can put it to the wall whatever you know usb-c mm -hmm. um so you have so, no problem there. so if we have usb-c why we have also micro usb right there um, you have some accessories right now that have like, uh, you know, like some grip, different accessories yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah. they already still, uh, they use still have the, the, the micro USD. So, so you have both, yeah. yeah. But probably USB-C is a faster transfer yeah. rate and, and everything is faster. The, the older USB grip, the older Sony grip uh, with mm -hmm. controls actually has a cable. So that's why, and it has a micro, uh, micro USB. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. I really appreciate the fact that right now we're going with doors and mm -hmm. look at that. I mean, oh, that, we have that a full, is amazing. That, yeah. I mean, you have a full size <laughs> HDMI. I actually snapped that one one time already. And we no longer have this uh, dangling doors that, you know, when you have them all mm -hmm. open is, you know, yes. just dangling around. And, and not only that, but this as well. So this, yeah. doesn't move so this I you can that. leave it like that and it, it really doesn't move yeah. uh yep. this one it will fall there you go so that one happened but like this. i noticed we have it yes. back on day seven three yeah we I, have I, it back. <laughs> just to sum it up guys you know there is a reason why sony um makes a lot of different cameras and like he said i mean they are very specific when you really understand what they're you know shine at uh sony uh sony a7c compact camera that is the camera that you may want to grab you know for traveling pack light but again it's very powerful at both things kind of like what the sony 7 III did it when it came out when it came out but it was you uh, know yes 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 another thing that i want you to talk to us because it's very new and a lot of people are completely disregarding this the gyro data the fact that the sony 7c and the sony a7s3 have gyro data that we can use to stabilize the footage and catalyst browse Right? Yes. Correct. It's something that completely puts these two cameras in a complete superior level as mm -hmm. even the A92. Correct. You know, being able to film and stabilize your footage using, you know, gyro data, you know, the coordinates of the camera moving in real time. Correct, correct. Um, I do have some some samples. I don't have them with me right now here, but it's in the computer. So you can see the actual difference of when you activate it or, or deactivate it. Uh, yeah, just just keep in mind when you activate the the, the gyro or the active, yeah, you're gonna crop crop uh, a little bit more, yeah, of yeah, course, just just a tiny bit. So if you're using like a 12 millimeter, uh, you know, ultra wide angle lens, it's gonna go up to like 13, mm -hmm. 13, and a little bit more. So you know, you just be aware of that. But uh, same when you, you stabilize in post, it's the same thing. Correct. You know, if you're in correct. Premiere, you wanna you know correct. apply a warp stabilizer, it's gonna crop to yeah. So I, I don't mind. I would I would rather yeah. get that cut and have have even more stabilized, yes, footage. And, and the other thing is that you can prepare beforehand and shoot with a wider lens because you know that you're going to be cropping. A hundred percent. And, and 100%. get that. So um, that's another thing, guys. And one of the reasons why, actually, I have a video coming up, five reasons why the Sony A7C is better than the Sony A7 III. But one of the reasons is that one, you know, having gyro data um, available for you to stabilize your footage because honestly you can actually do handheld with this camera no problem and then go through that post-processing um, process which is going to give you a super steady footage you know a lot of people have been saying oh yeah but i can stabilize in post it's not the same because the post you know stabilization is going to guess a lot of you know what the software think is proper stabilization but gyro data is using you know numbers to really tell the software where the camera was in space therefore correct it accurately so correct, correct. that's awesome that, that's correct. completely awesome and the a7s3 i don't know if you know but uh 
I don't, probably a lot of people, uh, you can put a CF Express Type A and SD cards in the same slot. Oh. So not at the same time, in the same oh, slot. Oh, 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 okay. so, so, so you can put in both, you can put SD cards or in both you can put a yeah. CF Express or one, one, one or whatever you want. The reason I say that is because not yeah. everybody do the same thing. Right. It's either, you know, different companies, is it, uh, CF Express in one yeah. and SD in another, and that's it. That is what that's you it. Can. So here you can. Uh, I love that. That's you can you can do yes. Whatever, and it also helps the camera want. to remain some somewhat you know manageable in size because if you start using CF Express Type B, for example, I mean, that's and if you bigger. want two, then the camera becomes a lot bigger. Much um, bigger, correct. I wanted to ask you another thing. Yesterday we were talking, or before yesterday we were talking about. Uh, some of the functions that are going to require the CF Express Type A card, and something about the right speed. You were telling me about the, about the 120. If you can brief us up, because I think that there's still a little bit of confusion because a lot of people haven't got the camera yeah. yet. With the SD card, so SD card, any SD card that you put on the camera, make sure is at least V60. If I were to be me, I would buy V90. And that's it. So and that's, what and I that's have. it. This camera can shoot in 4K in three different formats, H.264, H.265, or all intra, which is the most yeah, uh, high you know, high quality that you can get from the, from the camera. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the SD card, you can actually shoot all three different qualities. It's just that with the SD, you wouldn't be able to shoot a 4K in all intra at 120. 120%. You can still shoot in all intra at 60p in high, in the highest, res, uh, not highest resolution, highest quality of 4K, up to 60p. Up to 60p with the V90. With the, with, the, with the V90, exactly, with the SD card. Now, if you, uh, you can shoot uh, H.264 and H.265 in 120p with the SD card, not just all intra. No, no limits. Not no all intra, but uh, with the other one, you can shoot a 120p in 4K with the, still with the SD card. Just make sure you grab those uh, formats. Uh, if you put the uh, Express card, you'll be able to shoot up to 120p in 4K, all intra with the Express. Um, if you put the camera in SNQ, you wouldn't be able to do 240 frames in HD with the SD card. So you wouldn't be able to do that. So you have, you need the a, a CF Express Type A on the, to be able to shoot 240 in HD. Oh, in, even, even in HD? In HD, or up to a? 200. No, no. SD card. Oh, SD card, SD card. SD card, you wouldn't be able to shoot 240 frames 200 per second, period. Period. Which, in, in, yeah, yeah. which is uh, HD. Because so, of the speed of... Yes, it's very, very fast. And uh, and it wouldn't be able to show you the video in a slow, in slow motion. motion. So whatever you shoot in S SNQ, the camera will shoot at the frame that you tell the frame that you tell it to, but also it will show you at 24p if, if that's what you choose to. Okay. So you can shoot at 60p or 120p or at 240p and choose uh, 24 to show it to you. So it's yeah. showing you in a slow, in slow motion. motion. Is that something that I realized? I'm like I'm filming in in uh, in uh, I'm filming in 120 with the V9, V90 that I have right uh -huh. here. Uh, you know, this is the tough car. This one right here. And right. Um, I'm like, I'm playing the video and it's not slow. And with the other cameras, when you shoot in 1080 at 120 mm -hmm. frames per second, you see it's slow. But here is because I don't have the uh, the CF Express Type A, that I don't see a 120 co co SNQ. Co correct, you wouldn't be able oh, to do that. there you go. Because so the car is not fast enough to, to show you the, the video and that, and that so, speed. So, so yes, so uh, all I intra is, I believe is uh, 300 megabytes uh, per second. So when you multiply that by by five, I'm sorry, 240, 240. 240. So 240, 120p, 4K. So when you multiply that by five, that's when it, it needs uh, a fast card that would shoot, uh, would uh, record in 1200 megabits per second. So 240 wow. by five is 1200 megabits. And when you put an SNQ, the camera is recording and then it's giving you that reading speed to review that image. So if you don't have a SD card, you wouldn't be able to, to review that in slow motion. SD card or CF Express? 
in SD, you wouldn't be able wouldn't to. With the CF Express, you, you would be able to do that. Yes. $2,000, $2,500, you know, someone that wants to do content, create YouTube videos, take great photography, travel with the system, and, you know, don't break the bank. Which camera do you the, rate? The A7C. The A7C is the camera, right? Yes. Um, you know, this past weekend, uh, I just went to do some video with the A7S III and I brought this camera. So the photography, I was doing this, a little bit of photography, because this is already a little bit chunkier camera, obviously, yeah. comparing to that one. And guess what? I liked it. I, I like the quality. I like the focusing speed, like you say. Yeah, oh. so I think that camera is just a sweet spot. It's not too big, it's not too small. It has consistency. Like you said, you can put any kind of lenses, full frame lenses, even uh, crop sensor, you know, lenses. Even crop uh, I, don't, I don't think you're gonna do that, but you can if you want for, to. For video? Yes. So, for video? So you can put a, whatever a lens. Sigma you there. can put a, a 70 to 300 lens APS-C and that 300 is not gonna be 300, it's gonna be 450. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, uh, any of the full frame cameras, you can customize a button that you touch mm -hmm. and it will give you 1.5 crop, crop yeah. sensor. Boom. So in, with one button, even on the lens or whatever, yep. you know. Yep. So, yes. Now, um, and again, I think that the difference between the body only and the lens is about $200 only. Yes, or 250, yes. something if like you that. Buy it, yeah. So, I mean, you won't get any zoom lens for $200, especially with the quality of this lens after taking pictures up in the, in the computer, pixel peeping like I like to do and realizing, damn, that freaking lens is really sharp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Rainier, thank you so much for being here at the channel. Thank you for coming. Anytime. Thank and you so much. Be alpha. Thank you, Gaston. <laughs> thank you. Take care, guys. Oh, one more thing. Remember, if you're interested in one, there are two ways to get one. Go and pre-order one or subscribe to this channel to enter in the giveaway. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And remember, I'm going to be making the announcement on December 24th or the 25th. Good luck to all of you guys. We'll see you again. Take care. Thank you.